Last time out, we looked at the best semi-open earbuds on the market, for those people who want alternatives to the more common in-ear style. Today, we'll be looking at the best fully open earbuds that are designed to offer complete spatial awareness and that prioritise comfort and stability for workouts. I'm not going to be considering any bone conduction models that clamp around your head and have muffled sound quality. Instead, I'll be focusing on the open air design and, more specifically, those with ear hooks to secure them in place. These are a popular choice for workouts since there's no risk of them dropping to the floor, and their open nature means you can maintain an awareness of your surroundings. We'll rank all of the earbuds by various categories, and I'll discuss both the ultimate winner and which scenarios each of these might work well in. So first up then is the Soundgear Sense from JBL, whose live flex earbuds performed very well in the semi-open earbuds video recently, and a lot of those great features carry over here as well. You'll notice the cases for earhook earbuds tend to be much larger, though you should still be able to fit this in a pocket, but it sadly doesn't support wireless charging. The build materials and the design is very basic, not exactly cheap feeling, but the matte black plastic for both the case and the earbuds is certainly very minimal. The Soundgear Sense are one of the heavier pairs of earbuds in this video, so they're not the best option for long listening sessions. However, I still find them plenty light and comfortable enough to wear for hours at a time. And with nothing plugging my ear canal, I don't find this design as fatiguing as in-ear designs. They can actually pivot out from the ear hooks for added flexibility, and you can open the ear hooks across three different positions to suit your ear size. I find I can actually tighten them in place over my ears for a very secure fit. They have essentially no movement at all when I'm exercising. There's an IP54 protection rating from some dust ingress and light splashes of water, so you can use them in the rain. There's actually a neckband included in the box. It's very simple, you just shove the ear hooks into it and it doesn't offer any adjustment. I personally won't ever use this, but some people like the added stability this can bring and like being able to hang these around their neck when not in use. There's a nice large surface for the touch controls which is very responsive and gives fast audible feedback for each tap. Occasionally out in the rain they weren't quite as responsive and won't work with thick gloves, so that's a potential drawback for touch controls. You do get a really good range of gestures, so you can have play pause, skipping tracks, volume control and your voice assistant all at once. You just have to customise the controls in set groups and can't choose individual controls. The JBL app offers a few rather nice extra features too, including custom equalizers, adjusting the voice prompts, the left-right sound balance, very important if your hearing is weaker on one side, and there's a Find My Earbuds feature. You'll also see a max volume limiter to protect your hearing, a really great feature to have, but just as with their live flex earbuds, you can't manually choose the limit. It's 85 decibels only. Spec-wise, we're looking at a 6-hour battery life and 24 hours in total with the case, and there's a fast charge feature for the earbuds too. That's actually the lowest in the video, but hopefully it's still long enough for most use cases. These also have a customizable auto power-off setting to help save on battery when idle. Most of these earbuds don't actually have this. These are the only earbuds in the video to support Google FastPair for easy setup on Android, and along with great range supported by Bluetooth 5.3, multi-point support, and a low latency video mode, these offer great connectivity specs. Looking very closely, there was a tiny amount of latency for video streaming, but the video mode does fix this. I just wouldn't try using these for gaming. JBL's mic quality was pretty good, my voice seemed quite clear, and I like how the voice isolation tech doesn't seem too aggressive. It does mean that some of the background noise will filter in as well, and these weren't quite as loud and clear as the mic quality winner, but definitely a good choice for phone calls. These performed very well when it came to the sound quality, and once again it's JBL's bass heavy sound signature that works really well here. Just as it did with the semi-open design, it works even better with this fully open design because the bass is always what tends to be lacking when you've got external noise to compete with, and no ear tips sat in your ear canal. So these offer the deepest and most powerful bass, there's an overall smooth and warm tone to the sound, and a loud max volume, which I expect will be very popular. A slight tweak with a custom EQ can help enhance the clarity, which these aren't the best for, but the overall quality is really good, and the tuning works especially well for an open earbud design. The Soundgear Sense offer an impressive feature set, great all-round performance, and a sound signature that's ideal for workouts and outdoor use. They're expected early next year in the US, but currently retail for $129.99 in the UK. Next up is Shox OpenFit. Now, we actually saw a more detailed review of these already in a Versus video on the channel recently, so check that out if you're interested. What we concluded in that video is that these are an excellent choice for comfort. 
They're the smallest and lightest option in this video, with thin and highly flexible ear hooks. Of all the earbuds in this lineup, these are the ones that I can truly forget I'm even wearing, so that's a huge major selling point straight away. They slide quickly and seamlessly into place over my ears, are light enough to cause no discomfort at the top of my ears, and they don't press against the tragus even when using the controls. I can't fault how these feel to wear whatsoever. Design-wise, these look pretty good too. It's a soft rubberized texture for the exterior, blended with a glossy plastic body, and the materials seem high quality. The touch controls are responsive and easy to use thanks to the large touch surface, and they still work when wet. There's also an IP54 dust and water resistance here. The only downsides are that there's a bit of a delay getting the prompt tone when you tap the controls, and also that the control customization is limited. There are only two gestures, double tap and tap and hold. You can choose different pairs of controls for each of these, but having more gestures would have made these a lot more versatile. There's not a whole lot on offer in terms of extra features in the companion app either. You can only change the equalizer, toggle the multi-point feature, and track the battery levels. You get around 7 hours of listening time per charge, and 28 hours in total with the case. So not the biggest battery life, but reasonable for an earbud this small. Sadly, the charging case doesn't offer wireless charging either, and is USB-C only. Again, it's of a similar size to most of the other cases for earhook style earbuds, something you can fit fairly easily in a pocket, and has a slightly smaller footprint than the JBL case. For connectivity, we're looking at SBC and AAC codecs, multi-point support, along with Bluetooth 5.2, and the range was good, but not quite as extensive as the earbud spec with the newer 5.3. Plus, there was a tiny amount of latency with videos on Android devices. Not enough to be a deal breaker for me, videos are definitely watchable, but something worth noting since there's no low lag mode to help with this. You might also want to consider that these don't switch to mono playback when you're listening with just one earbud. JBLs do, but Shox and some of the others do come with this potential drawback. If you watch my other video on these, then you'll know that the mic quality is pretty good. They isolate the voice quite well, in fact slightly better than JBL, it's just that my voice wasn't quite as clear. So. They're not perfect, but are a good option for phone calls. As for the sound quality, you'll notice that these take 5th place, but it's still pretty good here. They're really nicely balanced, offer good clarity in the mid-range, and the slightly rolled off highs never verge on being too harsh. It makes for a really pleasant and smooth sound that's great for podcasts, audiobooks, and most music genres. The bass is what lets them down, because although I wouldn't say it's especially weak, it is lacking relative to the other earbuds in this video. But the annoying thing for me is that it distorts on bass heavy tracks at higher volumes. The drivers just don't seem to be able to handle it, and there's an audible popping, echo type sound that follows each punch of the bass line. So your audio experience may depend on the genre of music you enjoy, and you'll likely want to tweak the sound with a custom EQ to get the very best sound out of these. But the other earbuds do offer a better bass response, and the shocks open fit have to take last place for sound. The Shox Open Fits are a pair of open earbuds with a very specific and important strength. Comfort. They're selling for $180 on the Shox website, and are down to £152 in the UK. I want to quickly mention today's sponsor, NordPass, and I get it, ads are annoying. But that's why I'll always try to bring you something I actually use myself, and that is genuinely good, so it's worth your time. The way it works is you remember just one master password, whilst NordPass can save any number of passwords, payment methods, and personal info, all in a single centralised vault. This info can be conveniently auto-filled online, is secured with multi-factor authentication, and because of Nord's zero-knowledge architecture, only you can see this information. Nord has no access. Some web browsers can do this now, but the advantage here is that you get a greater level of security, crucially it works across devices, platforms and browsers, plus you get extra security measures like real-time breach alerts and secure item sharing. As a business owner, this is great for being able to share logins and data across my employees, eliminating the annoying hassle of the password reset cycle that's often brought on by the more forgetful members of your team. Nord are offering a 3 month free trial using my code INSIDETECH, so at the very least you can just try it out and see if you find it as helpful as I have. The links to this are in the video description. Moving on then to the One More Fit Open S50, and these are similar to Shox in that they're also a relatively small, thin and lightweight earbud. I really like the design here, it's simple and minimal, but also sleek and modern. And also like Shox, there's a blend of plastic and silicon rubber with very thin and flexible ear hooks. At a couple of grams heavier than Shox, they don't quite match that fantastic comfort level, but they definitely come very close. 
These are another pair that can be worn pretty much all day with no issues. Those two are really a cut above the rest when it comes to comfort. What's unique about these are the silicon ear gels. You get a good choice of sizes here, and these can further improve the comfort you experience, acting as some spongy cushioning that still maintains the open air design. But more than this, you can improve the stability of the fit by locking the earbuds into place. The gels can position the speaker directly over your ear canal for a better sound experience, and you may find they stop the earbud moving when you're exercising. I found the larger gels were great for this. I've since gone back to the smallest gels which I find the most seamless and comfortable, but having these options is really great for the user. These also come with an IPX7 water resistance rating, which means they can be fully submerged underwater, and these offer the best durability rating of any of the earbuds in the video, so these are a very versatile option for workouts. You have a large and responsive touch surface for the controls, but there's sadly no audible feedback, so it's hard to know if you've tapped the correct number of times. You also only get two gestures here, and customization is limited, similar to shocks. But where these are better is in having wearing detection for auto pause and play. It isn't perfect, it can be a bit slow to pause, though resuming was much faster, but this can be really useful, and the S50 are the only earbuds in the video with this feature. For the specs we're looking at an 11 hour battery, 38 in total, and there's both fast charging for the earbuds, and convenient wireless charging for the case. The one more case isn't the most premium feeling and is on the larger side, but that bonus feature certainly makes up for it and is pretty rare to find with these earhook style earbuds. You get Bluetooth 5.3, multi-point support, and a low latency mode. You don't need this for videos, but it does provide a much lower latency than JBL's video mode, and these earbuds deliver the best latency response by some margin. You might even be able to do some faster paced gaming with these. These also offer the best mic quality for phone calls. These earbuds keep your voice loud and clear, whilst also offering pretty good isolation from the background noise. Simply put, my voice was the easiest to understand with these earbuds, even in noisier environments. So for phone calls, they take the number one spot. As for the sound quality, the S50s offer a really nicely balanced sound with great clarity. Probably the best here, so most people will have no complaints whatsoever. You don't get JBL's warm and bassy low end, but the treble is much more crisp and there's still a decent punch to the bass so your audio doesn't seem thin. There's almost no bass distortion and no harsh or piercing sibilance either, so you just get a really pleasant sound experience. I think the bass is slightly lacking by default, and I found the bass boost EQ was the best option here. But one more's biggest flaw is in not providing a custom EQ. I think it's less important with an open earbud versus an in-ear design, but giving the user better customization over the sound with a simple custom EQ isn't much to ask. Historically, this has been a feature one more has added to their earbuds later via a software update, so hopefully we'll see that here, but at least these still sound pretty great with the preset options. One more's Fit Open S50 offer the most versatile set of features and maintain great battery life, mic and sound quality without compromising on the lightweight and comfortable design. This great all-rounder is currently discounted to $114 or £106. The fourth entry is the other competitor from the Versus Shocks video, Soundcore's Aero Fit Pro. These have the most rugged build we've seen so far, and I think also the most interesting design. I quite like the charging case here too, which has a really nice build quality and is the slimmest and most pocketable one in the video. You can see that this is a slightly bulkier earbud, but there's still good flexibility on the ear hooks, and these are slightly lighter than JBL's Soundgear Sense, even if they can't match the ultralight designs from Shox and one more. You can still comfortably wear these for hours at a time. These also come with a detachable neck band, and it's both far higher in quality than JBL's, but is also adjustable in size, so it's much more useful. Again, I personally like the freedom from any wires and bands myself, it's what's so great about true wireless earbuds. But for some people, this type of feature is actually a deal breaker. So this, along with the IPX5 water resistance rating, could make these an appealing choice if you have outdoor workouts in mind. This is also the first model to come with button-only controls as opposed to touch controls. Normally, people are fairly evenly divided on this, but I can definitely see why there's often a preference for buttons in an earbud of this style. These buttons still work absolutely fine out in the rain or when using gloves, so they're quite convenient mid-workout. There are three different gestures and a really good level of customization for these, but no wearing detection like one more. Like JBL, you can adjust the left-right balance in the app, set the auto power off time, and use Find My Earbuds. But you can also turn on automatic volume adjustment. The concept for this is great, automatically adjusting the volume to compensate for the noise levels in your environment. 
but in practice this sadly didn't work that effectively. There's a big step up in battery life as these offer a huge 14 hours per charge and 46 in total with the case, which is excellent. There's a good fast charge feature here too, they're only missing wireless charging for the case. For connectivity we get good range with Bluetooth 5.3, multi-point support, and these are the only entry with a high-res codec in LDAC support. For me personally, it's not a huge draw since I find the nuanced detail the codec can bring is lost in an open earbud. This could be an important aspect for some, but I'm going to leave the feature off so I can use multi-point and enjoy a longer battery life. As we saw in the full review of these, these were a good option for phone calls. The isolation is usually good and my voice came through pretty clearly, just not quite as clear as with the other earbuds we've seen so far. So these come in fourth for the mic quality, but I think in most situations you could still use these for phone calls. For sound quality, I want to first mention Soundcore's exclusive spatial audio feature. It exists, none of the others have this, and it does support head tracking. However, the tracking isn't particularly smooth, and the sound quality does suffer when you turn this on, so I really can't recommend this at all. You are going to want to make use of a preset or a custom EQ though, since the default tuning is strangely lacking in clarity, but after some tweaking you can get these sounding quite good. These have the sharpest and most detailed treble, but still offer punchy bass that surpasses both shocks and one more. There's a bit of a V-shaped tuning here, and the mid-range clarity is slightly lacking, and that stops them from ranking any higher. These also have the quietest max volume overall. Not exactly too quiet, and I still listen at levels lower than the max, but it might be worth noting if you prioritise super loud volumes. Soundcore's Aerofit Pro didn't win any particular categories, but still offered strong performance all round. Plus, there could be deal breakers in the button controls and the adjustable neckband. They're available now for $170 or £150. The final entry then is the Olodance OWS Pro. I think these are the most premium and best looking earbuds yet, but the design does have some drawbacks. Firstly, the charging case is the biggest so far and might be a bit of a squeeze to get in your pocket, despite an otherwise nice build quality. But the earbuds themselves also have the most rigid ear hooks, and these are the heaviest earbuds in the video. Now, they actually distribute this weight pretty well, and they sit above, not on the tragus, so I'd still describe the comfort level as good. But after a few hours, you might find some aching at the top of your ear, and there's an obvious difference between an earbud like this compared to Shox and One More's earbuds. They do fit securely though, and there's an IPX4 rating, so they'd make a good option for workouts. The pros come with a unique control system in that there's both touch and button controls in one. The silver bar is one clickable button, and whilst I like how easy to find and press this is, it works with gloves on too, there's this unusual loud click response which doesn't seem to be on the same quality level as the rest of the earbud. There's something really unsatisfying pressing the button. I do really like the touch component though, because you slide up and down to adjust the volume, or you can change this to the skip track function. That's super useful. So this is the most versatile control scheme, with great customization over all of the gestures and even separate controls for phone calls. Having wearing detection would have been the cherry on top. The app offers custom and preset equalizers, there's also the left-right sound balance which we saw with Soundcore and one more, but there's something interesting here called focus mode. Believe it or not, Oladance has actually tried to implement some kind of ANC feature to a completely open earbud. It'll come as no surprise whatsoever that this basically doesn't work. If you sit and listen extremely carefully and toggle it on and off, you can hear the most subtle of reductions in the mid-range frequencies it's targeting. So actually, it is impressive that it has any effect at all, but you definitely won't notice the difference under normal use, so it's basically pointless and such a strange and probably expensive addition. Topping this on the list of pointless features though is Buddy a Bud, which lets you pair two standalone earbuds into one set. I guess, just in case you somehow lose one but find another random one on the street? A more useful feature is hearing protection, which continually monitors the volume level and will intervene and lower it if you're approaching dangerous levels. It's a lot more sophisticated than JBL's version, but I still ended up turning it off, preferring manual control. These offer an insane 16 hours of battery life per charge and 58 in total with the case. That's fantastic. We also have Bluetooth 5.3, AAC, despite the website only listing SBC for codecs, and there's multipoint support. Like Shox, these also don't switch to mono playback if you're using just one earbud, so that might be something to watch out for. The main area letting the OWS Pro down is the mic quality. My voice just seems a bit quiet and muffled compared to the others. 
I think they struggle with isolation in noisier environments. So they're okay, but not a great choice if phone calls are a priority. Oladance's greatest strength, though, is sound quality. Simply put, these offer the richest and highest quality sound experience I've heard in a pair of open earbuds. JBL might have an edge in terms of the depth and power of that bass response, but these come close and certainly offer a more balanced overall sound profile. The OWS mid-range is clearer, vocals are more prominent, and the treble is more crisp. Only one more comes close to this level of balance and clarity, but the sound is still more powerful here. Plus, you've got a custom EQ option to tweak the sound to your preference. They reach good volume levels too, and regardless of the genre or audio type you're listening to, you'll get the best overall sound experience here. The Oladance OWS Pro are lacking when it comes to mic quality and comfort, but the relatively heavy design is compensated for with the best battery life and sound quality. But if you want the best sounding open earbuds, then you'll have to meet the very expensive price tag of $230 or £183. So there are the five options for the best open earbuds on the market, and you can see how each of these has different strengths. The results summary would suggest that one more is the overall winner and shocks trail in last place, but we know this is oversimplified and it all depends on your personal priorities and how you would use these earbuds. I think you could make an argument for any one of these to be the best. The fifth placed Shox OpenFit have turned out to be the model I use most often. When I'm out walking Lily in the evenings, I like to be aware of my surroundings, so I choose an open design. And despite the fifth place finish for sound quality, I'm normally listening to podcasts and not music. So the bass isn't an issue at all, and these sound great for that. Plus, they are the most comfortable and lightest option by far, so it's a no-brainer. But you might want to go the other way and prioritise sound quality. There are plenty of people who still want a great music experience, but in an open design earbud. Ola Dance's OWS Pro sound excellent, last quite literally all day, and have a great control system. I can see these being a popular winner. But I can also see the $230 price tag being a problem. So perhaps JBL's Soundgear Sense will still fill that sound quality shaped hole, possibly even better if it's bass you really like, but in a significantly cheaper earbud. You'd also be getting a few extra handy bells and whistles in the app, and an earbud with adjustable ear hooks that might fit you more securely. But what if it's not Ola Dance's sound quality that enticed you, but instead the long battery life and the physical button controls? Well, Soundcore's Aerofit Pro offers that and are also significantly cheaper. You might also be sold on the adjustable neckband or want the only earbuds here that offer spatial audio and support for LDAC. And then you've got One More's Fit Open, which not only had the best overall ranking, but perhaps strike the best balance of everything. They've got comfort levels close to shocks, but still a solid battery life, so they're great for all day use. They're the best option for phone calls, gaming, and have convenient extra features like wearing detection, wireless charging for the case, and the swappable ear gels to help you get a more comfortable and secure fit. Plus, it's the only model you can fully submerge underwater, and they still provide crisp, clear, and balanced sound quality at a reasonable price. The One More Fit S50 is the best all-rounder, and if I could only choose one, then this is the one I'd pick. The lack of a custom equaliser is not ideal, but I personally put a bit less emphasis on sound quality with open earbuds. When I want immersive, high quality music, I swap to my headphones or in-ear designs instead. One more strikes a great balance of everything, keeping the convenient features I love about my regular earbuds and presents them in a durable open design that I can enjoy all day. But let me know in the comments which of these would be your pick. Do ask any questions you might have about these, and if you think there are others I might have missed, then let me know about those too. Some earbuds just didn't make the cut. If this video was helpful, then please give it a like, and subscribe to see more content like this. We've got the annual Headphones and Earbuds Awards coming very soon, so hit the bell icon to get notified when those go live. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.